guys welcome back to my channel so this video is gonna be about pet products that I don't buy anymore uh, I have a few pets and you know I've gone through my fair share of buying just out of you know impulse or just things that got really good reviews or felt like I needed to get um, so over the years I've learned the things that I just don't buy anymore um, they're kind of wasteful to me. These are pet products that I don't buy anymore for my dog and cat as well as for my exotic animals. The first one is dental sticks, like for dogs and for cats. I don't buy any of them. Uh, dental sticks, greenies, no. I don't like the ingredients and even the ones that I have bought that were quality ingredients, I didn't really like them just because the basic dental sticks that they have, obviously they have a shape to them to try to get any of the buildup and grime out of their teeth. Um, and a lot of them to make that shape, they need some type of starch in it, whether that's from fruit or mainly from vegetables like potatoes or like tapioca starch and things like that, um, just to have that form. And to be honest, starch is what actually makes a lot of the buildup on teeth, especially for, oh, that killed me. Especially for you know dogs and cats it's not something that is natural in their diet cats and dogs are carnivores so they should be sticking to you know small amounts of plant matter as well as meat um, but majority should be meat and I just haven't found any brands that you know don't have any starch so I don't buy any dental sticks anymore what I've been doing especially for CC is to buy like you know certain type of raw treats so for example i'd give her like cow ears or pig ears and the cartilage really actually does help to get rid of the buildup and grime in their teeth uh and i like i said i just feel like it's a little bit better than the other brands i've gotten so i don't buy those anymore next thing that i don't buy anymore is ear cleaner this is something that i just don't personally buy anymore because i like to just make my own simple ear cleaner which is usually from either blue and green tea uh, green tea has a lot of antioxidants in it and it's just really gentle on dog and cat's ears uh, so I use that usually if I don't do that usually I'll use something else that's gentle like olive oil or coconut oil so yeah I never really felt the need to buy any more ear cleaners I have before especially for CC because she was prone to getting ear infections but after just sticking to basic natural cleaners, I haven't had any incidents since, so I stopped doing it. If you suspect that it's even somewhere near bad or bothersome, please take them to the vet. The next thing that I don't buy are dog treats, specifically more so like store-bought packaged dog treats. Um, there are some stores that I found that have some raw dog treats, but it's kind of rare and it's usually, you know, the, the typical very popular brands like i'll put on the screen i don't buy those at all no <laughs> so it's kind of goes back to the dental sticks where a lot of the brands i just i wasn't crazy about the ingredients now there are some brands that have great quality ingredients um but i have spoken about it in a previous video i do feed my dog raw and a lot of the times most of the raw dog treat websites and companies they have really good quality treats that are just dried either meat or dried liver or you know giving her things like cow ears so disruptive <laughs> so i stopped buying dog treats uh personal preference again so the next thing that i don't buy anymore it's a dremel um it's to smooth out you know obviously if you guys have any big dog breeds like i do uh you know it's to smooth out the edges of their nails so it's personal preference i don't buy them anymore because it does make a loud sound and although that is you know individual because there are dogs that are perfectly okay with the dremel or at least they could get accustomed to the dremel for me personally my dog she had an injury on her legs uh, so anytime you pull her feet, she gets really nervous. So just the idea of having her nails cut, it always, you know, makes her nervous. Um, so I have to go very slowly, very gently with her. So the Dremel just kind of makes it harder for me because it gives her a lot of anxiety hearing that sound and especially, you know, trying to be able to focus and smooth out her nails it just makes her more scared than she needs to be i also found that they can be kind of expensive so for me i just buy a large dog breed uh, nail filer i'll put 
the one that I use on the screen is lasts a long time and it is much much cheaper than the Dremel so I don't buy Dremels anymore <laughs> so the next thing that I don't buy anymore is small quantity items uh, because I always buy in bulk it is much cheaper to buy in bulk I'm sure you guys have heard you know if you guys have pets it is much cheaper to buy in bulk so I rarely ever buy things in one you know like in a quantity of one I always buy you know three or more at a time based on you know the bulk price and you know how much it is based on the weight and how much that I use if it is a good deal I will always buy I never buy one item of anything really also keep in mind like when you buy vitamins in bulk make sure that you're looking at the date versus the amount that you usually use for your dog or cat because you don't want to have expired vitamins that just defeats the purpose uh, so definitely make sure you're paying attention to that but besides that I always buy in bulk I never buy single quantity items <laughs> So transitioning from that, we're going to move on to the reptile products that I don't buy anymore. Uh, I know some of you don't have reptiles, but obviously I have a few, so I thought I'd include it in this video as well. The first thing that I don't buy anymore is crickets in bulk. Uh, for me, you know, I have leopard geckos. Crickets are the most nutritious to get for geckos, uh, but I always usually buy them, you know, like 10 to 15 at a time versus what I used to do which is get like 50 or more at a time because a lot of times you're gonna have some that get loose you know you're gonna have one or two that get loose and they're just gonna run around your house and and chirp all night and you know it's not fun um and then you're just gonna have some a dead cricket somewhere so I don't buy crickets in bulk anymore <laughs> well the next thing that I don't buy anymore is cage or glass cleaner um, a lot of the brands that I've tried, they just, I don't know, they, they don't perform well. <laughs> I don't know, I just, a lot of the brands I've tried, I don't really like too much. Um, and I've just found better results with just making my own cleaner. So whether that's, you know, a white vinegar solution or apple cider vinegar, you guys can buy in recipes online. But, you know, it's just a solution that you put, mix, dilute with water. And yeah, it cleans the glass really well and it kills the bacteria, you know, from cleaning the cage. So yeah, I don't buy any cage or glass cleaner anymore. The next thing that I don't buy for my reptiles is food for their bugs. So bug food, I don't buy that anymore because as you guys know, you have to gut load your insects before you give them to your reptiles. But personally, I found that just giving them fresh food, like fruit and vegetables, is one, way more nutritious and two, much cheaper than buying bug food. The next thing that I don't buy is shed spray. Um, so it's basically like this spray that you put on stuck shed for either your snakes or other reptiles. Um, and it's supposed to help with their shed. Personally, I just found it better to, you know, gently soak them, you know, in warm water uh, for depending on how bad the shed is for like 10 minutes or so. Um, obviously making sure that you're always there and slowly and gently helping take off that shed. Um, I've done it before with all my reptiles and I've tried that shed spray, but personally, I just don't buy it anymore. I just, you know, manually help them take it off either in a bowl or, you know, in the sink or tub, whatever you prefer. Uh, but yeah, I don't buy any shed spray. Shed spray. Tongue twister. Shedding spray. <laughs> so, so the last thing I don't buy anymore is heat lamps. So I have a few heat lamps and I've tried a few uh, with all my reptiles because in my old house I was living in, my house would get pretty cold. Um, and I would struggle with that, especially when I first had them years ago. And personally, I just found that it took out way too much of the humidity for all their cages. Um, especially, you know, like for my leopard geckos, leopard geckos are comfortable usually at the room humidity levels. So that's, you know, anywhere between 20 to 30 percent. Um, sometimes people have it at 40 percent, but for the most part, that is the range they should stay at. And a lot of times when I would use the heat lamps, it would just suck out all the humidity um, and they would have bad sheds. Uh, so and I would have to obviously help them with that. So I just stopped buying them and it was especially even worse for my other snakes You know my ball pythons they obviously need high humidity and the heat lamps would just take it right out I would try to put a water bowl under the heat lamp I would you know mist a bunch of times throughout the day But 
it would just always take out the humidity way too fast um so i just don't buy heat lamps anymore what i'll do is if obviously if the room is just way too cold i try to focus on the room temperature and make sure that i'm trying to get that up rather than you know individually try to put the heat lamp because it just takes out way too much humidity um again it depends on where you live you know the state that you live in but personally i just don't buy it anymore <laughs> all right guys that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed uh let me know any more suggestions that you guys will want me to do i have more videos coming up uh so hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and you'll see us next time